What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to be taking a look at the Retro 51 Goulet Pens Exclusive Fire and Dice. Uh, so I had an unboxing video for you guys and a shocking number of you said that you wanted me to actually do uh, a quick look on this. So 100% let's do it. Um, so it's definitely emulated after good old D and D. Uh, so I've got my <laughs> player's handbook here that has come in clutch so many times. If you've never played D and D before, or you're a new player, definitely, if you're going to get any book, get the player's handbook. It helps you out so, so, so much. Uh, and I recommend it to everyone. Uh, and then I also have my little D&D notebook here. Uh, this is where I take all my notes on the campaigns I'm playing, on the characters I'm building, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and it's literally just covered in D&D stickers. <laughs> uh, on the inside, uh, mostly D&D, but some non-D&D. So, good stuff. This is a Goulet notebook, uh, Goulet... Tomoe River notebook that I have fully d and d d and d uh, and this is my favorite sticker. <laughs> if you play d and d you'll you'll understand. All right, but all accessories aside, I just had to give that a spin. <laughs> So I have done a couple things on the Retro 51s before um, because I purchased this one, I want to say 2017-ish. Uh, this was the first Christmas popper that I ever bought from them. And then I bought this Christmas sweater popper last year from Goulet Pens. I'm 99% sure this is a Goulet Pens one as well, but this one I know for a fact, and obviously this one too. Um, and I was like, I don't need any more Retro 51s. This is enough for me. Uh, I've got one with a blue refill, one with a black refill. You know, Bob's your uncle, la la la. Um, but I don't have very many non-fountain pens. And when I saw this one, I thought I have to, I have to, I just, I just have to. It's non-negotiable. I have to. So top of the pen, you have the D20 or the 20 sided die, um, which is the pretty much the main die that you use in D and D you have their little gnarled, uh, twist section here. This is what you twist to actually bring out the pen. And then below that you have tornado by retro 51. And this is number 1,259. As far as I'm aware, this is not a, um, like a numbered piece. I think they'll continue to make them until they stop selling. Um, I could be wrong. They do also make a pencil version of this pen. Uh, currently, uh, as of the 23rd of July, it is sold out but I think it will be coming back. Um, the only thing with their pencil is that I do recommend that you buy the lead with it at the same time, uh, or the graphite, sorry, um, because it's a bit of a strange size and it's not easily come by. Um, but yeah, then you got the 12 die, 12 sided die. <laughs> this is the eight. It's just littered with all of D and D related things. So pretty much all the die you use six main die in, uh, in this. Oh yeah, their clip. This is a pretty stiff clip. Oh, it hurts the nail a little bit, um, but I don't really use the clip. In fact, typically I have my notebook on the inside here. Uh, I've got some extra paper. I've got my dice. Actually, for those of you who have never seen D&D &D dice, um, these are mine. So this is what uh, we actually play with for the most part. Um, so this is like the main one you'd use. So these are all of the dice that are on the board uh, or on the pen. And this is like the main one that most people are used to, the six sided die. This is like a regular in every board game ever, uh, dice. Um, but the D20 
sometimes D6, sometimes D8, uh, depending on what kind of thing you're trying to accomplish. The only die I've never actually ever used is this one. <sighs> but who knows? I've only ever played uh, two campaigns. So I have that. Um, but basically, it just sits in here. Sometimes I'll clip it. Sometimes I don't. In fact, most cases I don't. I just kind of slide it in there. Um, and this is just a superior labor notebook thing. Um, I do have a review of this a long time ago. So I don't really use the clip. That's a long-winded way of saying I don't really use the clip. <laughs> uh, and then you got this dope freaking dragon. There's two dragons on here. But, I mean, here's the rest of his body. It kind of wraps around. Like, the detail on this pen is crazy. You've got the arrows. You've got some swords. Got, yeah, see, that's the D6 I was saying that most people are familiar with. And then the bottom half, you've got the bottom part of the dragon, you've got a shield, another sword, a little trinket guy, more dice, you've got your money, you've got your books. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like a spear or if it's like a wand, depending on who you're playing, different characters. But it is just so cool. I was worried when I bought this pen that it was going to be too heavy because it's like all metal and that it would smell because it's all metal. But there's absolutely zero smell and it's actually light. Like if I bring out this Christmas popper, I would say maybe it's like... A as, as like a bare whisper heavier but it's pretty much the same which is awesome and then it does come let me pull out some paper this happens to be Tomoe River you don't need Tomoe River for this but it just happens to be might as well just use some paper um, this is the black refill Uh, oh yeah. It's so smooth. It's nice and wet for being a, uh, a rollerball. It's like a jelly rollerball almost. <laughs> Uh, it does take a bit of time to dry, especially on paper like Tomoe River, uh, on regular paper that you would use like in school, like in high schools and stuff. Um, doesn't take as long to dry. But when I take notes and stuff like that, like my notebook is open for hours, so I don't really have too much of a problem. Uh, and the black refill is just what it comes with naturally. Uh, so you can't change that. It just kind of is what it is. Um, I would say like line width, it's kind of a medium-ish. Oddly enough, it's it's the same <laughs> width. It, it sort of looks like as this fine, but if memory serves, this is this was my Pelican uh, M805 video, and that fine writes like a medium. So I would say like from a fountain pen perspective, it writes kind of like a medium. You can get blue refills uh, like I have in this Christmas popper. Uh, oh, no, this is the black one. No, it's the blue. Uh, through the camera, it just looked black. Uh, I do have beef with the blue one, though. Um, it's just as smooth and whatnot, but it, it does tend to bleed and feather, which is odd. Uh, but it's not as bad as it was now that the pen is dried out a little bit, but it does still do it. But I've never had a problem with the black. Um, so this has certainly upped my D&D &D game like a thousand fold. <laughs> um, not because it makes my character any better, but it softens the blow when I do roll a D1 and, uh, you know, just have a, a crit failure. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of the quick look. There's not a whole lot to discuss about uh, 
the Retro 51 Fire and Dice, other than do I recommend it? Oh, heck yeah. Absolutely. Even if, like, you don't love D&D, if you don't have a Retro 51 in general, I would highly recommend picking one up. Uh, because it's awesome. If you like this pen, hit the like button on the video. Uh, if you want to see more every Monday and Friday and the occasional rando on Tuesday, do hit the subscribe. If you want to help support me and what I do here, do hit the Patreon page in the description below. Oh, I did forget to say that you can fully disassemble this pen. That's how you uh, replace the refills. Um... Yeah, leave a comment down below if you've ever used a Retro 51 fountain pen, um, because if you have, I would love to know, do you have such a positive experience like I do? And that just shot out there like crazy. <laughs> uh, if you've used a Retro 51 and you didn't have a positive experience, let me know that as well. Uh, but as always, if you're still watching this far in, thank you very much. You are the reason I make these videos and I will see you next time. Bye. Well, all right, all right, all right. Today it is time to say thank you to all of my Patreons. I am so grateful for you. Today is, is July 3rd, so if you do not see or hear your name, uh, just be patient. I update it as soon as I can. So for our ultimate human, we've got Daniel Roddy. And then for my VIPs, we have Glenn Kelly, Joan Worthman, Brian Hunter, Aaron C., Luna Wolf Games, Bobby A. Bailey, Bass, Weile Chang, Brian Law, Lucas Bell, Aubrey Madcourt, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lineman, Jessica Chow, Stephen Baldwin, Carol Lowry, Michael Simon, Sean Sturdy, Catherine Molina, Robert Myers, Bill Pemberton, Karen Epstein, Gretchen Peters, Subi One Kenobi, Bianca Andrews, and Digital Tent Tech. And lastly, but not least, McCall Bennett Lawrence. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone, no matter the tier you're in, uh, whether it's bottom or top, does not matter. You all make what I do here possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you.